Oh, I'm thinking that this blank canvas needs to be addressed, but we must do things first. Okay, be all that you can't see. This is a neo uh, easel. Let's see if I can get it to work. <laughs> okay, I thought I'd try to document me doing an oil painting. I did them before, like in sixth grade, and continued later on. So here's some brushes. This is a big fatty brush, and here's it's all glued together. And here's I just this is just linseed oil. It says purified, but it should say petrified. <laughs> and here's a little bus brush thing. So I'm gonna collect some supplies, see if I can start this. But you know, the first thing you need to do when embarking on an oil painting, well, a little canvas, of course. You can Walmart get some cheap canvases. I got a couple of these kind of deals. This one's a oh uh, it's um it's a it's a this size by this size, which I think I think it's 18 by 20. It doesn't say. But anyhow, you get yourself a nice little canvas. I like the ones that are stretched. And we gotta think of a theme. Okay, so I gotta think, okay, something that is inspired. I'm thinking something landscape-ish. And this is what my thought was. Now, I had this idea to follow Bob Ross lesson and do a quickie formula painting via Bob Ross. And then everybody else, I, all of a sudden I see all these videos. <laughs> oh, I did the Bob Ross painting. And I'm like, I don't know. So now I'm just going to uh, ad lib is what I'm going to do. But should I be landscape? or vertical. I want to do something like uh, maybe a cliff, it's like a sky, uh, maybe kind of a cliff thing and a valley-ish thing maybe. Maybe somebody standing there like, uh, something like, you know, like you gotta have a visualization. It's like over here is gonna be a cliff. Or, you know, maybe part of the thing is like standing on this edge thing, maybe, Pool water thing and and try to do Bob Ross reflections and get all this motion that I'm describing with my fingers into the picture. 2D, 3D, into 2D, colors, and then <laughs> I'm just riffing. So the idea is okay, something just get an idea, something where I want to go. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Oh gosh. Okay. And I did some. This is a, a stand up easel. And it might, I'm looking for paints that got lost. Okay, there's no paints in here. There's a. Oh, there is paints. There's an easel. So, ah, brushes. Okay. And see, paints get gooey. <laughs> and, oh yeah. This little thing, I, uh,. I open up the paints with a little thing like that. So there's some stuff, and if you want to sketch, there's a pencil, or and then there's oh, ow, my toes. <laughs> Painting is very dangerous. <laughs> there's a, there's a there's a thing. Here, let me let me get this going out here. Huh? Okay, it kind of uh, clips out, and then it just goes in like this. Little wing nut, little wing nut. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to do this kind of easel, and hopefully. The easel. Oh gosh. Okay. It's 
get some clips on this side. See, because they say in this ancient book of painting, oil painting that was done, I don't know, like early 1500s, it was the book of painting oils. You know, right when the Age of Reason came out with perspective. Oh, and there's another. Uh, okay. So they're all like into perspective and, you know, it's close, it's far, it's far, and it's far away, it's small and it's close, it's, it's right there, perspective. And um, when that was a big hit because of the age of reason and science was, and this isn't going, is it? Don't break it. Okay, it's kind of a tripod. Also, sort of a science thing, <laughs> and uh, figure out how to. Okay, this is up and down. Okay, this doesn't go out all the way. I don't know why, but I don't want to break it. Oh, and um, like uh, you know this thing. There, it slides. So you can go you can push it down somewhat. And then there's this thing here, which can go up. That's nice. Let me stick this thing in here. And, uh, clamp it. Oh. <laughs> what happens when you you have to keep you have to keep um, keep good care of your equipment? Wait, that one is that one. This one does that one. Then okay. oh, those don't. Oh, that's not even part of that. And there's these things which um uh, do that thing and. Um, <laughs> Just a second. Knock that over. See, there's like these little clips in the back. Now you can go up with these little clips in the back. Hold it down. Okay, so I guess that is. This is the thing, though. Oh. Something like this. And then it goes up here. And don't fall over. Then you can screw the. Oh, yeah, I was missing a thing. And, and those lathes need to be extended. Okay, so now it's up here, and now it can. This whole top panel can tilt upward like this. And then there's a thingy on the side. This one's missing. Now we know where this part. I found this part. <laughs> it goes on the side to find the bolt okay so now it tips up and you have your painting uh, work area up here and um, these little things can clamp up so it doesn't fall out and go in butter side down um, whatever and so there it is and there's down here there's a there's a drawer. And you put paints and stuff inside. So you got your little paints over here, and um, and then there's the thing that's tangled in that. And uh, again, paint. And oh, there's a big dry brush. See, because we want to try to do. Um, just what I remember, which is not much. What I remember from the Bob Ross thing is a little like wet, white. So I gotta get the white paint. See, this has what they call gesso. It's on there, so it's white paint already, but it's dry. So what I think one of his big techniques is, is he has like 
white paint, very wet with one of these uh, vehicles, you know, the solvent, one of these, it's like linseed oil. I just use linseed oil. So we paint this with white, very white, wet stuff. So it's coated. And then he jams on the stuff where he can do the smearing and this sort of blending. And one of the main techniques, I think, from Bob Ross, it's the quickie formula stuff. Okay, so we got this canvas up, and someone had, my good friend is uh, Leilani, had uh, given me a lot of oil paint stuff. So I have uh, my old gear, but I figured I'd try to use these. So I selected, there was, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, some of it I don't know. There's like paint mediums and everything. I picked out this safflower seed oil because it's much like the linseed oil so basically i think we're just going to use those to uh liquefy a little bit i got one of those little things and i taped oh gosh this is this tape isn't i just taped on this basically um kitchen uh paper like you bake cookies on it and it doesn't stick i'm just going to use that so when I'm done with the palette, I could just pull this up and throw that out. So I'm going to have some blues. There's some light blue. So the blue thing, I picked out a, a cadmium yellow and this, I don't know, kind of a brown or cobalt yellow. Okay. So here's white, black. There's this refined linseed. It looks kind of liquidy. I'm trying to do the, the white brush over. There's a couple of browns so I don't have to mix up in a little blue and a blue and an orange. I'm like wondering. I'll probably pick some green and do some green stuff too, but uh, there's my little picks right now. Okay, it's uh, it's uh, stormy out. I mean, it's not stormy. It's um, overcast, muggy out. Um, I haven't painted for a long time. I'm going to try to do this pretty quick. It's kind of a for fun painting, break the ice. But <clears throat> trying to get into the mood. You don't wear good clothes because oil paint gets on it. It's hard, yeah. And paper towels. <laughs> Here we go. Can't even do a little boring part. I, I, I uh, mixed a bunch of the safflower oil instead of the linseed. It's a little wet, and I'm just using the uh, uh, palette knife, one of these palette knives, to the, uh, do this. And, um, and oh my gosh! Oh yay! Okay, don't forget. Paper towel, roll of paper towel is very handy, and wax paper for the bottom of the palette is always good. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna whitewash and be right back. Let's put some of these paints down over here to, but um, you know, blue, um, yellow, and red. So I got a little bit of uh, a kind of a crimson, a little orange. We'll put some of the browns over here. This is just, you know, uh, burnt sienna on, um, I don't know, um, Indian red. Uh, the, these names are all over the place, but I just look at it. Here, that's orange. And here's yellow and cadmium yellow, which is kind of a very bright one. This is Aurelian cobalt. So this one's um, aqua blue, I think. <laughs> and then a couple of different blues. And get some of those primary colors and then mix. Okay. Okay, I got this whitewashed up here with the safflower, and it's kind of drying pretty fast. It's just white on white. I don't think I need too much uh, pigment because there's a white underneath it, but I definitely need the safflower. I just kind of did like half of it because I'm going to think. Oh, I'm doing that bedding. Sky. And it's sick of sky in there. So, um, 
Now, I'm not telling you guys how to paint nothing like that. I'm just showing some, like, you know, my little haphazard way. So I have a little bit of the cadmium yellow and uh, some of that orange and blue and aquamarine and a little purple. <laughs> Fancier than that, I'm not going there. And I got a big glob of white, and I do have black, but I try to stay away as best as possible. And there's reasons for that, but whatever. So let's do the sky bit. And so if it's um, dark in the upper part of the sky, so these ones, right? Like the purpley and the bluey. Okay. So I'm just going to put them out here. Like, I don't know. I'm just going to put it out there like that. And, um, and paper towels are oh so handy. And this is what I'm going to do. Now, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I don't know if I ever know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to remember some of the uh, techniques of the late, great Bob Ross. And uh, uh, I'm not, uh, no shame because uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to uh, demean the guy's name. And he had some problems with um, after he was gone and they took all of his stuff, but we won't go there. So here's the darkest one, right? So I'm going to put it up at the upper part. So it's just going to be this kind of wispy wash for you. Now, like just watching what's going on also with a little bit of purpley thing. And ew, I don't want to blend it too much because I want some of that coolness. Now, what I'm going to do is just try to pull off some of the paint off the brush. And then, safflower dip. So I'm going to keep it white. And I'm just going to use a lot of this, uh, I think it's cobalt blue, which is pretty darn dark. So I'm going to cobalt blue the next sort of layer. Uh, cobalt blue. Okay. This is no particular rhyme or reason, except the spectrum of light and how that sort of goes through atmospheric stuff. Now, I don't know if this is, I don't even know if this is going to come out right. <laughs> and here's another, oh, that's darker. It's back to the purpley. So let's get some more of that cobalt blue. You know what's even better? How about a little bit of white? So you don't want to use white too much because it starts to make stuff pastel, you know? So we don't want this too banded. It's supposed to be looking like sky. The beautiful sky. Maybe sunsetty. Sunsetty, setty, setty. <laughs> okay, okay. We can uh, do without this thing, you see. Okay, so, what we, if this is like, um, we don't want to get, I don't want to, well, me, myself, I'm just like going, okay, what am I doing here? It's, I like this purpley, um, this light bluey thing here. And now that just looks weird. It does. I mean, and I'm just going to get a little bit of that into that. And that's looking brownie. Brown. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm just going to try to yellow out here. Now, I'm going to say no offense to any Bob Ross fans. No offense. Because this isn't looking anything like his cool stuff. <laughs> this is just like, I saw that uh, whitewash the thing. So I'm trying to see if you whitewash it and it has this. You can pull the paint as is. Pull and push the paint across the white a uh, bit. I'm not used to that, so um, I don't know how well that's working out there. I kind of want to make a sort of a sort of a bend that want to go across like stripes like that. Oh gosh. 
Now over here I'm going to put some type of mountainous effect. Over here, I don't know. It looks like cornball. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm just going to take take a breath and and uh, <laughs> what's the darkest blue I got? Is it this one or is it this one? Ah! And that's the other reason why I have little teeny pair of pliers because <laughs> you gotta, these things are just too tough. They, they, get, mm, they get cranked in there. So a little teeny pair of pliers, if you got these, is just put it, oh, I just painted my shirt. They're, just put them in your like little kit pack and a gob of that. This is ultramarine blue and it's dark and we're just going to sap it up with sow flower. This is I put the cap back on. Careful because these things, once they start getting all slimy, they're all over the place. So there's tons of these. This is like this blue. This blue. It's not the cobalt. It's the ultramarine. The ultramarine blue is kind of like what I'm using for black because watch how dark this thing will be. Okay. Safla, siflu, see it does so dark. But now I'm picking up some of the paint that's up there. That's why they do these strokes all the way across. Okay, get that other stuff out. Put some of this dark blue in there. That's dark blue in there. Because what I kind of want to do is set flower out. That's what. <laughs> but you don't want to put so much set flower that it starts to drip. Careful for that dripping stuff. It's not a friend. Not your friend. Just blew it out. Okay, that's cool in a sense a little bit. Now I don't want those streaks. Okay, what am I going to do here? Yeah. A little bit more of that. I don't want that dark. That's about it. If I bring it out, that's about as dark as it gets. And it starts to get light again. That's right. It's a circus. <laughs> And I'm, I am, oops, I am the clown. I'm just going to put cobalt blue on the brush because I am a lazy painter. That's why. And I'm going to dip it in the safflower goo goo, the little tin thing. And I'm just going to do some giant things here to see if I can get some of that paint on there. That's not so, hopefully not so streaky. I'll leave some streaks in because you can't, you don't want to have this is going to be just the color wheel of surreal colors here or something. I don't know about this. Now, I think what he did was, another one of his techniques i got to remember. So i like, got to be thinking when you're doing this thing. Think. <laughs> what are you doing? That's what he, he, he would get the brush and he would... um get paint off of it and then he would just pull it across that's how he makes those um those uh uh things those uh um things uh reflections that's what he does reflections see see i can make this like dramatic with the colors and stuff but i don't want to get too Whatever that means. Okay. I think I need a break here a second. Because there's so much blue on this brush. I'm going to use this junky brush because I didn't wash it out. It's pretty gummed up. And I'm going to try to do the clouds. <laughs> I fear clouds because <laughs> the most difficult thing to do 
but something you said you just kind of just kind of put them in there just like just have a kind of a kind of a duh, 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 like some cloud thing here and I don't know, it's got blue all over now it's some cloud bit going on and you push the brush up and makes a kind of cloud looks like the mountain tops that he was doing and I don't know about this <laughs> Okay, I stop trying to paying attention to the painting rather than Okay, so I'm gonna try to have the top part of the clouds where it's a little bit more cumulus, right? Now this other stuff, I don't know what's happening here. Oh uh, yeah. Hopefully, let's get a little something that looks like a cloud. And then the paint is smearing up. That's not good. So I'm going to wipe that off on the, the, what do you call, paper towel. And just kind of is once you go pure white you can't go any whiter than that but I want white on the tops of these things I think a little bit and some type of substance underneath and maybe a little white over there that's not uh, Okay, I'm gonna stop like that and um, switch brushes. I think. <laughs> now, tell you the truth, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a um, one brush painter. A lot of times, I just get to wa wash that one brush. But this one's got the blue, and um, I'm gonna um, leave. I'm not gonna put more blue on it because it's got a ton of blue on it. And I'm gonna pull couple of these things down just in a, or a couple of pull it down so it kind of has a um, uh, what do you call it a volume yeah maybe that's what it's called volume so in here and then over here because you want to try to think these things as maybe something like that and I noticed this technique, if you look at other people's paintings and stuff, you pick up these little things. And um, just put in a little bit of this purpley thing. Oh, that's, oh gosh, that's too much. It's all, uh oh, okay, wipe it off on the paper towel, but there's still that purpley thing on there. And I'm going to put on some blue onto the brush, to the purpley and little blush. And... Uh, hopefully this works. I'm just going to make a delineation, maybe a little bit lighter. Okay, less paint, more the oil. Let's see, there's a, a sort of a flatness to the bottom of clouds if, if you get them with rain in them. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to, uh, well, I'll have to decide. See, it's always making decisions as you go. And now, I don't know. That's just weird. Um, paintings, no matter how much you do, they never quite, um, they'll never come out as you plan. But I do know that once you get, this has, has a little bit of that purples hanging around. So, once you get to the bottom of the sky, it's a little bit more of that aqua bluish type thing. And the tops of the sky are like usually a lot more um, dark. So it'd be like dark and light. But uh, this particular 
yellow is cool, but um, it's sort of uh, very yellowy because <laughs> it's yellow. And notice I'm not doing uh, straight across. I'm kind of doing a a thing. I think I I got this GoPro bit going on where things are curved. So as a rule of thumb, you want to mix your paints on your palette, not mix them on the on the canvas so much because that's where the you know you you wipe off the brush. You wipe off the brush, it doesn't have as much um, uh, pigment on it, and you're pulling it across to make those special effects. It's kind of gimmicky. Now, uh, this still has paint on it, see? That's the pigment. And uh, you, 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 you want to spend your time using your palette knife, which you can wipe off and get, oh shit. And so I use the two different blues, the ultramarine and the cobalt. And um, just just kind of mixing them in there. That's pretty safe um, because I want to have a pure bluish thing. Oh, I think I want some more of this aqua, 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 aqua. Yes, aqua. Good. I like this aqua thing. Some some mixes are hard to get, like flesh tone, aquamarine. So if you have a tube of that, it's pretty easy. But if you stick, just remember the primaries: the blue, red, and yellow. Okay. So I want to try to do. Um, uh, ocean and maybe um, a kind of a pool of water. Now I don't know about uh, light to dark and dark to light, right? Because um, when you get that uh, light to dark and dark to light thing, then it's a little like uh, uh, there's dark paint can go over light paint, but light paint is hard to go on dark paint except for those touch-ups, the highlight with a pure white, bing, like a little shine in the eye, pure white. And that's like effects. You want to get the, you, you start off with, I think, the lighter one. And so I'm going to wipe off this palette knife and uh, go for some of this blue, the dark blue. <laughs> Oop. And I'm going to mix it with the white over here, not on, the, uh, not on the canvas. So I want to have a, oh, that is really, that's a sky blue here. That's a, that's a very sky blue. Matter of fact, since that's so sky blue, I might want to go over. Actually, yeah, I'm going to change my mind here. And use some of this. This is a nice sky blue, and it gave me an idea. Oops. I'm going <laughs> to. Ah, fixing mistakes. That's where it's at. So, this, this is like too much yellow for a sky thing. So, I'm just going to drag. This is dragging paint across. That's not the coolest way to do things but it's gonna be I'm gonna hide behind the excuse that it's a sunrise or sunset or something but I just wanted a little bit of this sky blue to invade that very yellowy yellow so now there's all kinds of colors going on here that's nice. I like the color thing, but it's also sort of, well, I don't know, we're too realistic or something. Oop, there's this guy blue right in the middle. But uh, what we're doing here is, I don't know. So I got this light blue going on. Okay, so it's light. So I'm going to mix some of the, um, I need more white. You white, you, where'd, where'd the white go? <laughs> Yeah, should thing in the big box of paints and oh, oh, I know I put it underneath here. <laughs> the secret compartment, the drawer. Uh, it's weird doing this. Uh, it should I should be focusing, but um, but uh, sometimes when you do some haphazard stuff, you gotta accept the results and look at it and go, oh, okay. That's the way it is. <laughs> so here's just white. Now I'm mixing it with the brush. That's not particularly fantastic, but it's a light color. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, the light blue, right? Um, but when you use too much white, it starts to pale it out. Okay. But 
that particular yellow is kind of weird. It's looking kind of brownish because I'm mixing the yellow and the and the brown now. But I think I think accenting it with this light uh, aquamarine blue, since there's a lot of white on the brush, I'd save the day. See, since it's sky, you know, and it's very transitional colors, and I suggest uh, uh, usually a kind of pastel type uh, thing with sky. I, 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 I could be wrong. I'm just thinking out loud. That's all I'm doing. Okay. So this is the sky and the horrible clouds. <laughs> I'm so terrible with clouds. What am I doing? Well, there's white here, so... Maybe you can stick some more white in there. Uh, uh, am, I, am I ruining it? I don't want... See, I just want, I want something that looks cloud-like now. And I might be doing some accent in there and some blending, but wait on that. Okay, so I'm going to take the remainder of this paint, and I'm going to, uh, okay, so I'm like thinking something like this with a composition of something. So I'm going to have an ocean thing about here. Now, the ocean thing, one thing you want to do is make a, a nice, uh, if you can, solid... Uh, make them straight, make a straight line. Now here's a technique. Um, let me grab this. It's a stick. This is just one of these like little flagpole sticks, I don't know. And what you do is, uh, let me go up here a little bit. Let's see if See if this, oh, okay. All okay. right, there's the sky and the horrible clouds. Now I'm not gonna have that much sky, I think I'm gonna take out some of that. <laughs> but here's the stick. So you can put the stick on here to brace your hand. Because on this kind of thing, what I can't think I wanna do is just make I know. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> no, it's not terrible. It's wonderful. Talk to yourself. In nice tarns. It's, it's, it's happy. It's a happy, happy horizon. So I want this kind of darkness. With just use, I'm just using a straight blue. Maybe a little bit of that purpley thing. Which is that blue as possible. Now, since, um, but you can use these to help brace your hand. That was the tech trick I was going to show you. Yeah. <clears throat> What's kind of cool is um, it's like a thin line that way, but you just go down a notch and do another thin line. And we're just gonna step on the blue. <laughs> step, literally. <laughs> I'm just going to put it down here, put it on the palette, try to be over, and then I'll put on more paint, a little bit lower down, and try to make thin line, I'm just going to use the purple, hopefully that does something, and then another, 
line. And then try to go back to the blue below that. Another line. The idea here is the horizon is far away. And so the little waves on the ocean are going to be kind of close together. So if you just keep doing these little lines like that, starts to look okay but there's too much of this other paint on this brush so you notice I'm doing the single brush and it's bringing up paint from below as well and now I think is try to get that blue on that side of the brush I don't want it to drag across like those things. I want to get some. See, I should have just whitewashed the sky area and saved this differently. Because it's just going right through and showing what's below, which should be ocean. <laughs> so, as you get a little lower off the horizon, you just gob on some of this blue here. Okay, yikes. <clears throat> oh boy. Yeah, this is going to look like one corny painting. So I'm getting the feel. But no, it should be nice. If it's a nice painting, it's really super cool. I might even use black <laughs> on this horizon. Uh, shall I use black? Um, I put it over here so it would not use it so readily. But um, there's a lot of white on this. And um, what I need to do is have a kind of a darker uh, bit going on with that horizon. Now, I'm going to try to do a little bit of black. And what I want to do here is, yikes. <laughs> You'll soon see why you use black sparingly. But I'm looking not to the tippy top, but just below the top. And I'm just going to draw a line. Across the ocean. Now I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to try to get rid of this black on the brush. Try to get rid of that. If you, if you squeeze squeeze the brush between uh, your fingers and a paper towel. The paper towels are so wonderful. <laughs> you way frequently here. And uh, put the cap back on the black because definitely want to make it uh, a sparing thing. Now after that I'm going to go back to as much the dark blue as I can muster here. It's dark blue and go just below that. There. So what that to look like some real ocean really out there. It doesn't have to be perfect because the ocean doesn't go completely perfectly yeah okay do we have any of this bluey blue blue so yeah, I'm not used to talking to myself with this oh wait this should be on that side of the brush oh this is all gummed up okay oopsie ah, get that off there I want that on that side of the brush is I want to try to release that. It's kind of making a line. But 
it's keeping that black in there too so that's not perfectly great hmm. well, here's more blue no wonder I'm just gonna lob on some so I really want to get that feel of deeper ocean but up on the top of the horizon, you want those lines to kind of be closer. Ooh. Now there's too much oil. See, now it's getting down over here. See that yellow beneath it is coming through, which is the wonderful technique of um, Ross and pulling paint across uh, paint existing on the canvas. So, yeah. Um, I'm just going to go over in, in here with this aquamarine already. So maybe it, maybe it's a current. That's what it is. Maybe it's waves reflecting light. That's what it is. <laughs> this aquamarine is doing me good, though. And you don't have to brush it all. You know, where it's, you don't have to make it totally smooth. I mean, I heard people talk about. Oh, it's totally smooth and all that blah 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 okay now down over here um what i'm gonna do here is uh i want to make some type of water thing and um how i'm gonna do that i'm not really quite sure but uh so like some type of mountain here it kind of pools in water here so this whole area here i want to make um, a, a water bit. Hmm. So since it's darker on the top, it should be darker on the bottom. But I do need some. Uh, you know what? If I just do this, palette paint. I'm gonna use some white and the blue. I'm just gonna palette paint. So I'm putting the paint on canvas with a palette knife so I can retain some of the, uh, the, the light uh, glue. It's looking different because when you use a palette knife, a different thing going on. And Now, uh, on the bottom, I'm just going to use straight out of the tube, a little safflower, and then mix it on the bottom with some of this paint. See where I'm at? Oh, that's pretty dark. Just going to keep that bow. are you doing and all I can say is I'm not quite sure <laughs> except this is kind of more a freshwater reservoir of sorts and try to work that in but what I want to do is make it a sort of make it a background well it's, it's going to be a foreground but I'm painting it as if it's in the back Okay, so with water, there could be water that's closer that looks a little bit more um, 
light you know and so but in the general scheme of things as it gets lower it should be darker Okay, so we got this going on. Which is water. <laughs> There's a place for water, let's put it that way. A place for where water is supposed to be. Now let me think for a second. 